Une petite démonstration pour euh, mettre la limaille sur les aimants. Alors, tout ce qu'on fait, c'est on jette la limaille dessus comme ça. Et en ce moment, on a un peu quelques trous qu'il faut euh, remplir. C'est joli, hein <rire> C'est magique, je pense. This work is uh, called Socle du Monde. And Socle du Monde is actually the title of a work by uh, Piero Manzoni, who made a piece uh, with the same title. And in his case, he has a, a metal socle, uh, which is upside down. Um, and it, you know it's upside down because it has the inscription on it upside down. So his meaning is that there is the socle and the world is below it. So we're all, you know, the whole world is held by the socle du monde. So I took his title because I wanted to create also a, a base for the world. And in a sense, uh, making a base uh, that would sort of reflect how the world is at the moment. So I took this cube and decided to create on the surface a very organic texture. What I was thinking about is something that would look almost like something disintegrating or decaying. And by implication, if this cube is falling apart and is sort of disintegrating, then the whole world is falling apart and disintegrating. A bit of a pessimist view of the world, but <laughs> there you are. But at the same time, you end up with something very sensuous and beautiful because that texture is very ambiguous. You don't know what it is. It looks soft, it looks like fur, it looks like astrakhan. Uh, but actually, when you touch it, it's cold and it really falls apart, you know. So I like this kind of intriguing aspect of the work. In the 80s, a lot of the work I made uh, was dealing specifically with the body, uh, body as the subject, um, but also body as the material that uh, ends up being used um, in the um, paper works, for instance, using hair and nails and uh, bodily fluids as well. Cor étranger actually um, originates from the series of performances um, that I, I was doing in the 80s, uh, which were to do with surveillance, meaning being watched uh, by the eye of the state, if you like. And it's really something that struck me a, a lot when I first uh, went to London in uh, 1975. I noticed so many uh, video cameras everywhere, wherever you went, you were being watched. It's a work which eventually took the form of a cylinder, a cylindrical room that you can enter into from two points. And on the floor you see a, a circular screen with the video projection of a video filmed inside the body, inside my own body actually, using endoscopy and coloscopy to map the inside of the body. So for me it was like an extreme of surveillance where no part of the person is uh, left unobserved and unscrutinized, if you like. It has this kind of feeling of being uh, the body sort of laid out open on the floor that one can actually walk all over it. At the same time, uh, it almost feels like um, something that gives you a lot of anxiety because it's like a hole in the ground that can actually uh, swallow you up you could actually fall into it. And it sort of brings out all sorts of um, taboos of, uh, associated with women's body, like uh, the vagina dentata or uh, the devouring womb. Light Sentence is uh, one of the early large installations I made where I was really trying to work with 
the phenomenology of the space and materials to suggest certain things uh, where the audience can become part of the work and it's not anymore about me delivering a message like I used to do in the performances. I wanted the audience themselves to experience a certain situation that may bring out in them certain feelings or thoughts. For me, I mean, using these lockers, what was interesting, again, this issue of uh, surveillance, it's like they're advertised as um, being lockers that uh, allows people to lock their things in, but they are transparent, that you can see through them, and therefore, uh, you know, nobody's going to hide a bomb in there or something. So again, there was this issue of surveillance in the way they describe them in the, in the catalog. So, I mean, of course, I was attracted to these uh, lockers because of the fact that they look like cages, but also the grid, the, the mesh, is something uh, that's always been very attractive to me because it's a sort of rational system, if you like. But uh, in my case, I like to push it to such an extreme that it becomes dehumanizing. Uh, it becomes more about imprisonment, about a cage in uh, experience. It's uh, also this reference to uh, regimented architecture, something that has been imposed by a higher power in order to contain people into kind of um, containable units, if you like. So anyway, the, the point of this piece is that with the light moving up and down and the shadows constantly moving in the space, uh, it destabilizes the space. So when you walk in, you feel like um, uh, the ground is shifting under your feet. Um, and it's a sort of situation of constant flux and uh, it sort of gives you a feeling of instability and restlessness. Like, for instance, you have in the map, you have, um, again, something that looks very beautiful but quite unstable because uh, it's made of uh, little um, marbles. So um, it's uh, often the case that um, the space becomes something that makes you question the ground you walk on, whether it's stable or uh, safe to walk on. Very often, when I'm asked to do a show somewhere, I, I prefer to go and spend some time in the space where the exhibition is going to take place. And um, I, I try to sort of use local materials and let myself be inspired by whatever I come across in that location. So basically, I spent a month in Jerusalem working on an exhibition for Galer and Adil. And a lot of the work ended up uh, making reference to the local situation. Um, and one of those works was uh, Present Tense, which um, came about just because I was walking through the market and picking up uh, soap that you know, I grew up with. Um, and I decided to lay it down on the, on the floor. And uh, I used little glass beads, which I pre pressed into the surface of the soap to draw the contours of the Palestinian territories, which were supposed to be returned to the Palestinian authorities according to the Oslo Agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. And uh, what struck me about this map is that it's a lot of little pockets of land that is kind of separated in what looks like islands almost, with no continuity between them. And I thought this was like um, really dissecting the area into so many borders and barriers and, uh, and it just looked ridiculous for me. So that's why I wanted to visualize it somehow. And um, of course, using the soap can imply that it's a temporary situation, hopefully. Uh, eventually the soap would dissolve and with that, 
uh, all the uh, borders will disappear. This work is called Hotspot, and it's the globe itself and the delineation of the continents. It's made with uh, red neon, um, and the whole thing is kind of like the world is ablaze, um, and it has a very interesting buzzing energy that comes out of it. I use the word hotspot here as in uh, spots of political unrest or conflict or war, that you usually find in certain parts of the world. But of course here, I'm trying to say that the whole world is uh, caught up in conflict and unrest. It's not anymore something that's uh, peculiar to a specific uh, area where there's a dispute over borders or, um, or certain political uh, issues in certain areas, but it's uh, something that affects the whole world. At least this is what I was uh, trying to say with this piece. This work is called Twelve Windows and uh, it's made of 12 uh, pieces of fabric embroidered with Palestinian embroidery. And normally these embroideries uh, you find on women's dress. But of course here they've been abstracted uh, and made into panels. In 2010 when I was in Beirut preparing for a, an exhibition at Beirut Art Center, uh, I was approached by uh, Inash. It's basically the name of an organization, an NGO, uh, which was created in Beirut in 1969, I think. Uh, the aim of this organization was to uh, provide employment for women in the Palestinian camps in Lebanon. Also to try and preserve this um, traditional craft, Palestinian craft, which was in um, danger of being extinct because of the dispersal of the Palestinians um, across the region. Their idea was to make uh, 12 pieces of fabric, each one with the colors and motifs and symbols from different uh, important region of Palestine, and to present them in a museum. So I was inspired to show them in a space where uh, they are hanging on a washing line, but the line is a steel cable and it's been stretched um, across the space between the walls, very taut, but it also hits the floor in, in various points so that uh, it actually dissects the space, if you like, and creates little obstacles for um, the viewer. When they walk in, they have to go over certain hurdles. So this kind of this dissected space with uh, borders, if you like, or hurdles uh, becomes like... Um, a metaphor for uh, a divided territory.
this is a, a little bit of a cabinet of curiosities. And a lot of these objects have a little bit of a humor, if you like, and a touch of surrealism and some reference to artists like Duchamp, for instance. In this cage, he'd made a work called Why Not Sneeze? And this is Why Not Squeeze? Because you have two hairballs, you know, that you could squeeze together. Uh, so there's a reference to Duchamp in there. These curious objects, I call them eye catchers, you know. And I made them in Japan. Um, I made a work that was had a sexual content in it. And I thought, uh, when people see that, their eyes are going to fall out. So something had to catch them. And basically, I was inspired by finding these uh, beautiful little um, objects, which are traps for catching fish. Mm -hmm. And I put these things for the ears, and they became glasses. And then I went to a traditional um, bamboo maker and asked him to make the traditional one, the kind of handmade one with uh, fishing wire and glue, and the industrial kind of uh, modern one, which was this one. So I had these three together. Um, here you have uh, two cups. It's called T42. And it basically, I actually thought about it when I fell in love with my husband in 1993. It's, it's, for me, it's also the kiss of Rancuzzi, mm -hmm. you know, two cups so close together. Uh, in my work, people always expect things to be serious, so they don't expect humor or, um, um, you know, playfulness, if you like, because everything has to be serious. I'm Palestinian, it's tragedy, it's, it's this and that. In fact, it's funny because um, the first humorous piece I made was um, Jardin Public, which is a chair with the pubic hair coming out of the seat. And someone made a point to tell me that they liked the entire exhibition I had at the Arnofini. But this was not Monohatun. Thank you. 